Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL 3D game tutorial and this week we're going to be using specular maps to choose which parts of our entities should be shiny and which shouldn't and we're also going to extend the system a little bit so that we can set certain parts of our objects to glow which will come in useful in the next tutorial when we implement the bloom effect. So previously we've been using diffuse maps to specify the colour at any point on a model surface We've also used normal maps to specify the normal at any point on the model, and now we're going to be using specular maps to indicate how shiny different parts of the surface should be. If you want to specify different colours of specular lighting on different parts of the model, then you could use all three colour channels of the specular map, but usually that's not necessary, and you just need to specify the intensity of the specular lighting, or how shiny or not shiny the different parts of the model are, and for this we only need to use one colour channel. So in my specular maps I'm only going to be using the red channel and the more red a part of the map is, the shinier the corresponding part of the model will be. So for example here I'm making the specular map for the barrel and I want to make it so that the metal parts are shinier than the wooden parts. So first I colour all the metal parts in full red because I want them to be very shiny and everything else I'm going to make a dark red so it will still be a little bit shiny but a lot less shiny than the metal parts. And that is it, so this is now a very simple specular map for the barrel. Obviously there are loads of other ways to create specular maps and I'm sure there are some programs that you can use that will do it for you to some extent, or maybe you can download some textures with pre-made specular maps, but whatever it is, just get yourself a specular map that you can try out for this tutorial and save it as a new image in your res folder, and obviously don't overwrite your original texture or anything like that. For the first part of this tutorial I'm going to be testing out this specular map here which is for the tree model and this should make the leaves of the tree shiny but the trunk not. So let's get into the code and we're going to start off this week in the model texture class and in here we're going to need to create a new int for the specular map so that's going to be the id of the specular map texture and we're also going to have a boolean to indicate whether we're actually using a specular map or not because not all of our entities are going to need to use a specular map. Then we're going to create a method that allows us to set the specular map, so this is of course going to take in the ID of the specular map, and we're just going to set this specular map equal to spec map, and we're going to set this dot has specular map to true, um, because previously it was false, and obviously if we've set a specular map it should now be true, and we want to have a method to find out whether we are using a specular map, so create a method called has specular map, and we're also going to create a method to get the specular map texture ID and that's just going to return the specular map. Then we're going to go into the shaders, let's do some work in the fragment shader. So we're going to need a new sampler and this is going to be the sampler to sample the specular map and we're also going to need a new uniform float which is going to indicate whether we're actually using a specular map or not for this entity. So down at the bottom we're going to check whether we're using a specular map and we're going to do that by testing if use specular map or uses specular map is greater than 0.5 and if it is greater than 0.5 then we're using a specular map so we want to sample the map and get the map info and we're going to be sampling the specular map and we're going to be sampling it at the usual texture coordinates and then we simply need to apply the specular map to our specular lighting by multiplying our total specular lighting by the red component of the map info because of course we stored the specular information in the R component, in the red component of the specular map. So we now need to do the usual thing with these new uniform variables. So in the static shader, we need to create a new int for the location of the specular map uniform. We also need to create a new int for the users specular map uniform and we're actually going to create a new int for the model texture uniform sampler because we need to lo uh, link that up to a texture unit which I, I don't think we've done before. So in the get all uniform locations method we need to get the location of those three uniform variables as always. So location specular map is going to be get uniform location specular map and the same for the other two. Make sure that you spell the uniform names correctly as always because otherwise it won't work. And once you've done that we need to connect up the text units to indicate which texture unit the samplers should be sampling from. So the model texture is going to be sampled from texture unit 0 like always 
and the specular map we're going to be binding to text unit one so we need to tell it to sample from texture unit one we also need a method to load up that boolean which indicates whether we're using a specular map or not so create a method called load specular map and that's simply going to call the load boolean method to load up the boolean to the uses specular map uniform then let's go into the entity renderer and in here we need to call that method that we just created so this is in the prepare textured model method first we're going to load up whether we're using a specular map or not and then if we are using a specular map so if texture has specular map then we need to bind that specular map and if you remember we need to bind that specular map to text unit one so make sure to change that to a one and what do we want to bind to text unit one we want to bind the textures specular map so now we can test this out so in the main game loop i'm going to test this out with the cherry tree model so first i need to make the cherry tree model shiny otherwise it doesn't really make much sense to use a specular map and then i'm going to set a specular map for this cherry tree model and i need to load up the texture and my texture was called cherry s so put in the name of your specular map and don't forget to refresh your project if you've added a new file to your res folder and then you can go ahead and run that and hopefully if everything has worked we should now be able to see that the leaves of the cherry tree are now shiny but the trunk is not because in the specular map i made the leaves part of the texture red and everything else was black so only the leaves are shiny if you want to implement specular maps for your normal mapped entities as well then you just need to make the same changes to the normal map fragment shader the normal mapping shader class and the normal mapping renderer class but you will have to use texture unit 2 for the specular map this time because we're already using texture unit 1 for the normal map so in the renderer make sure to bind to texture unit 2 and in the shader make sure that you have the sampler for the specular map sample from texture unit 2. so here you can see an example of the barrel with specular mapping now and as you can see the metal parts are much shinier than the wooden parts we can now very easily extend this system a bit to allow us to specify which parts of the object we want to glow. For example, for this lantern model here, it would be nice if we could indicate that the orange parts of the lantern should be glowing so that they aren't affected by diffuse lighting. We could use another texture map for this, but seeing as we're only currently using one color channel of the specular map, we can just use one of the other two channels to specify the glowing information. So I'm now going to use the green color channel to indicate which parts of the model should glow and you can see that I've done that here for the lantern. And if I wanted I could still use the red channel of this texture map as a specular map. All we have to do to get this working in the code is to add a little bit of extra code into the fragment shader. So we now need to check if the green component of the map info is greater than 0.5 and if it is then it means that this fragment should be glowing so we'll set the diffuse lighting to 111 which is full brightness i'm just going to test this out with the lantern model now so i'll need to add the specular map to the lantern texture and i'll load up that new specular map that i just created here although this isn't really a specular map anymore so it might be best if we rename this method to something more suitable like set extra info map because this map can now contain both specular and glowing information. So if I go ahead and run this, you can now see that the correct parts of the lantern appear to be lit up, and we're going to be taking this even further next time when we implement the bloom effect. So that is it for this week. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.